about the incline plane today. Um, so physics is one of those subjects where you actually need to go with intuition in order to solve the problem on paper. And so physics has a lot of math, but you need to understand the placement of different objects and understand how the different vectors are drawn to be able to actually solve some of those complex problems that you see. So today, I'm just going to be showing you some of the things that you can do using the incline plane physics playground. I'm not going to be going into the math of it because solving these equations is definitely best done either on a piece of paper or on your board. So the best way that I would recommend you use this platform is to actually watch a video or read your textbook about this chapter, about the incline plane, um, Newton's laws, and about friction, and then come into this virtual space to try it out and try out different experiments so that you can build that intuition for what you just learned. So over here, we can see that there is an actual inclined plane. And so right now it's at 30 degrees. I can pick it up and I can move it. So this is at 15 degrees. So for today, I'm gonna to go ahead and put it at 30. And then I can pick up this object on the ground. And I can place the object on the plane. And so what I'm supposed to do is actually click on the left grip to pause or unpause finding the object. So I have complete control of what's happening in here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. So I clicked on it twice. So the first time I clicked on it, it started and then it paused. And now I can actually see the three body diagram. So I'm going to actually get that on my feet so that you can see this. So over here we see, oh, sorry. So now over here we can see the normal force. So the normal force is perpendicular to the plane, right? And you can see as I'm pointing different things to you, if I actually put my hand into the plane, it changes the material. And that lets us test out different types of friction, which I'll talk about in a second. So just ignore that for now. So we have the normal force, which is perpendicular to the plane. And then we have mg, which is the weight of the object. And that's going to go straight down to the floor, right? So mg is basically the mass of the object times the gravitational constant, which is known as the like um, meters, and then newtons. And then you have the frictional force, which is about 17 newtons in this case, because it was originally so if I go ahead and click on it again, it slides off. The reason it slid off that quickly is because the coefficient of friction was very, very low. So in order to build that intuition, I'm going to go ahead and try different types of materials so that you can see what the different coefficient of frictions are. And so you can see on this graph that rubber actually has the highest coefficient of friction, and intuitively that makes sense. The way that you want to actually read this graph is you see the angle in the bottom, so that's the angle theta at which the incline plane is at, and then on the y-axis you have the actual mass of the object. So you can see that in order to keep the object stationary on the incline plane, rubber is going to be stationary at a very high angle, for a very low mass. And so I'm going to walk over to it right now so you can see this. Um, so over here, so let's look at 60 degrees, right? So even for a mass that is about 9 kilograms, it's still going to be stationary even at 60 degrees. And so intuitively, a heavier mass is just harder to move in general. And so if there is a really heavy mass, um, that's going to add to the object being stationary, right? So for rubber, if it's about 9 kilograms, it's going to be stationary at 60 degrees, and that obviously means that anything that's over 9 kilograms is also going to be stationary for rubber. Um, for wood, you need a heavier mass in order for it to be stationary at the same angle, and then a heavier one for metal, and a heavier one for ice, and a heavier one for frictionless items. This might be a little confusing, but just think about it as we perform these experiments and just keep 
keep this ground in the back of your head. Okay, so right now we have a completely frictionless surface and I'm gonna go ahead and watch what happens when I let go. So the object slips right off pretty quickly. And that was expected because there's very little friction. Okay. This is a completely frictionless surface. This is something that you wouldn't be able to test out in real life, but it's something that we can test out in this virtual lab. The object slides off even quicker than it did on ice. Now let's try proper. I'm going to go ahead and skip some of the other ones. Um, so we're going to try rubber right now. So let's let go. And you can see that the object's barely moving. And that's because of that really high friction of objects in the surface. So I'm going to switch it to wood. And the object flies off. Awesome. So you can experiment with these different values. You can actually change um, the angle of the incline plane over here. So we have this other setup right here, which is an actual pulley that's attached to the incline plane. So this is where things start getting a little more complicated because you have more objects, more forces to look at. So I'm going to place this object right here, and I'm going to go ahead and leave it on wood for right now. And we need to actually attach an object at the back of the board. And so we can pick up this weight, and in this simulation, we have to change the value of the weight. And so I can see that's from four kilograms up to about 16. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 16 kilogram weight on the board. And let's go ahead and leave it at 30 degrees. I'm going to unpause and pause. And so now you can see that there are way more vectors because there's just more connected objects and that's just how mechanical physics works. So you have the normal force that we saw earlier, you have the weight of the object, you have frictional force in this direction, and then you also have tension, which is the force that's actually acting along the string as the weight pulls the object upwards. And then in the back over here, you have the weight of this object, and then you have tension, which is acting in the upward direction towards the string. And so when you need to calculate all the forces in this system, you're going to want to look at all the forces operating in one direction and add them together. So I'm going to unpause again, and so intuitively I think that this wants to move upward, so let's see what happens. It does. And the reason for that is because the force acting in this direction is just greater than the force in that direction. Awesome. So, so this is just a quick overview of different things that you can do in the incline plane simulation. In the coming weeks, I'm actually going to take a problem and we're going to work through it using an example in the simulation so that you can actually see the vectors in this real space. Um, so if you like this video and if you like our virtual labs in chemistry and biology as well, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And our platform is going to be coming, going to be available on August 1st, and you'll be able to do these simulations both on the Oculus Plus as well as using your desktop computers. Hope you have a great day.